Welcome back, Mumphy Mafia. In today's video, I am looking to set up and test out these diesel heaters. Now, if the setup for this kind of takes a little bit longer than expected, I'm gonna break this video up into two, one focusing on this PC style build, and then one focused on the briefcase style build. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the PC build. I think this is gonna be the option that most are going to choose just from a pricing standpoint, and then we'll get into the briefcase build a little later. So let's jump into it. All right, now if you decide to go with this PC style setup, the nice thing with this is you're gonna have a minimal amount of setup to do. That's because most of the stuff is actually already internal. The fuel line is already run from the fuel tank down to the diesel heater. The only thing you're gonna really have to worry about is your power and then attaching your hose attachments to it. This is completely empty because we are gonna be setting it up. I've already put the plastic feet on the bottom. So that way it gives it a little added height and space down here on the bottom for all of our hose connections. If I flip this on its side, you will see our two holes down at the bottom. One is going to be for the air intake, which we will attach our air filter. That's gonna go on the one next to the fuel line on this particular bottle. Your exhaust is the one next to that. The nice thing about these hoses is that they are bendable. And I mean, you have a little bit of stretch on the air intake hose, but you can bend it to the shape that you want. And same with the exhaust hose. Now I've kind of bent it into this uh, little L shape. And that's because the way I want it to run is out the side, but I don't want it to be sticking way out the side. I actually want a little bit of a lower profile. So that when I do stand this up, it's sticking more out of the side instead of straight out. So I have gone ahead and just bent that into my desired shape. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and attach our hoses utilizing the available hose clamps. We're gonna use the smaller one for these. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to the air inlet hose and then just situate the hose clamp where I want it and tighten it down with my Phillips head screwdriver. We're just making sure that we're getting it secured on there so that the air intake hose doesn't come out. Now, for how I wanna route this, I'm actually going to route it down and through my feet opening and just kinda of have it come up out the back. So you can see there, it's coming out through the opening. So when I stand this up, I can have this, I can adjust this if I need to. Next up, we'll do the same with the exhaust hose. And now I have that attached and you can kind of see how I have the lower profile. So when I stand this up again, you can see I just have it running out of the back here. Now, the nice thing is I can adjust this. So that way I can add the muffler to the end of that. And that will help keep things a little quieter as this is running. Next up, what we can do is we can take the larger hose clamps and attach our tubing to those to the front and this is the warm air exhaust so this will be pushing out the hot air just once again we're just making sure that it's not over tight but snug enough and then we can just have this how we want it next up we'll go ahead and attach the air filtration and that's just to make sure that that doesn't come off now, if you are gonna run this for your rooftop tent, you will just exchange this little tube out for a three inch insulated ducting tube or hose. And then you can run that up to your tent. All right, now that we have everything put together and this is the setup that I'm kind of liking so far, 
Next, we're going to hook up power. Now, our power cord does have an inline fuse, which is very nice in case we uh, kind of draw too much. There's a little safety backup. And I've gone ahead and attached a couple of spade receivers attachments to the wires here. I also ordered a couple of these cigarette lighters because we are gonna go into a DC port. These are a 15 amp plug. So there's a 15 amp fuse inside of here, 16 gauge wire, which matches the 16 gauge wire that we're gonna be tying into. I'm actually going to be changing the attachments here to the spade connection, and then that way we can give it a nice test. So make sure that you're using the right gauge wire for the right gauge, and you have enough fuse power in your connection. All right, now that we got the spade connections on there, we'll go ahead and connect them to the spade connections here. We'll go Negative to negative, positive to positive. Now we are just gonna test this out, so I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, seal these up just yet, because I wanna make sure that it works before I permanently attach these. Okay, so now I have my Jackery. This is a Jackery 300. We are gonna use the 12 volt input and as I turn this on, my jackery is only at 83%. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. We have a light, which means that the power is working and our power came on for the unit. So we know that this 300 watt jackery is going to run or the jackery 300 is going to run this particular unit, but we have to put some fuel in it and run it through its paces. Plus, we're also going to be utilizing the Bluetooth app that comes with this particular head unit. So this is Bluetooth enabled, and I'm looking forward to getting this going. So let's go ahead, I'll add some fuel in here, so that way we can get this primed and up and running. All right, latex gloves, so I don't get the fumes and the fuel on my hands. I also picked up this uh, kind of knockoff Rotopax gas tank. This is 1.5 gallons. All right, now I don't want to fill it up. I just want to get enough in there so we have enough to test. All right, now that we got some fuel in here. Let's go ahead and turn it on, get it primed. So let's go ahead and I'm going to remove the little plastic, plastic cover. I did hit the power button at the same time and we are going to have to possibly prime this. Okay, what you wanna do is after you turn it on, just let it kind of warm up. Glow plug is warming. Now you can hear it priming. There is air coming out of the front. And just so that I'm not getting fumes in here, I'm gonna open the garage just a little bit. Now one of the things you can see as this thing is starting to warm up is the output on the Jackery is 132 watts. We've already gone down two percentage points. Now we are also at max level, so it is gonna take a little bit. Let's see, I wonder if I can turn this down, yep. So just keep it at max until it kind of gets going. Now we're down to 28 watts, 31, and it is a wintry day as I'm testing this out. So it seems like priming is done. We're at 41, 66 watts on the Jackery. Startup failure, E01, all right. <clears throat> I did have an issue initially where it wouldn't start and it gave me an error. That's because I had the fuel level below the actual inlet. So I just had to fill it up a little bit. And now we're getting good function on everything cap off, or took the cover off, as you can see here to show you kind of how it's set up. Fuel pump, drawing in the fuel, down through the filter, it's coming down underneath and feeding up into the heater, into the glow plug. And 
got your exhaust. It's exiting out there. You got good air in here. Feel it being sucked in. And then of course you have your hot air being blown out. That's ooh, that's nice and warm. So the thing to watch out for, especially on your battery, is initial warm-up is going to be pretty high 100 watts. Now, even though this is uh, maxed out here, I'm only drawing about 45. That's nice and toasty. Now as for the controls, that's, that's the level there so I can turn that down so that way it's not maxing out. Just nice and slow. And on min, on the minimum level right now we're drawing 13, 13 watts right now. 11 watts, 9 watts. Alright, now you'll notice that I actually have it on the floor. And a lot of that is simply because the exhaust runs underneath the unit. Well, anything you put underneath it, that exhaust gets very, very hot. And you may run into something like this. Uh, melted table so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're looking at going with this you're probably going to want to prop it up with a couple of two by fours that way you have plenty of clearance underneath even though this has that plastic those plastic feet make sure that you give this plenty of space underneath for that exhaust so that way you're not causing a fire hazard but i have this thing kind of running for a little bit now I'm going to unplug this from the Jackery battery and we're gonna hook up the briefcase version and check out that startup. I'm gonna make sure that I get plenty of gas in it first and we'll go from there. So let's jump into that. All right, now we have the setup for the briefcase style version. This one's gonna require just a little bit more setup simply because the gas tank is not attached. So we will be having to do that. There's also, uh, we'll have to run the fuel line from here to the unit as well. And all those connections that came in inside the gas tank. And then we'll have to make sure that we are able to hook up all of the other parts that came inside of this unit. Now that I have all of the parts outside of the container, we can actually go ahead and close this back up because all the rest of the connections are going to be on the outside. First things first, let's go ahead and get the fuel line and the fuel tank attached to the back. And here you can see that there are a couple of mounting holes on the back that correspond to the two holes on the gas tank. With the gas tank, what you'll end up getting is three washers, a couple of O-rings, three self-tapping screws. You'll get the fuel hose connector, which will stick through the fuel tank. And then this is just a secure nut to hold the nozzle in place. Next up, you'll want to get a drill bit that is sized appropriately to the nozzle and then figure out where you want to drill your hole. In my case, I think I'm gonna go right here on this outside corner. I'm gonna drill a hole starting there. If this drill bit is a little bit smaller, that's okay. I'd much rather have it be smaller so that way I can go up a size if I need to. Doesn't take much. And then we can clean up the hole. Now that we've made the hole, we'll just go ahead and test fit it. Okay, so the nozzle goes in. Okay, so I will need to drill the hole just a little bit bigger, and that's a good thing, because if I drill it too big, then I gotta find a different solution for the fuel. Okay, so my end result was a 5 16 and then all I did was I made sure I stuck it in there, and then I 
threaded the, pl threaded the plastic. Next, we'll need to fish this tip, because this needs to go on the inside and have the nozzle stick out. So we'll need to run a little fishing line through there. That way we can grab the, tip, the end of the nozzle here and then screw that on. Now, before we fish that through, we're gonna wanna put an O-ring on top first. And then once that's through the plastic, we'll put another O-ring underneath it because the plastic will sit here. We'll put another O-ring on and then we'll put this nut on top of that for a good seal. So that way we're not getting fuel leaking out of the fuel container. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this little bit of clothes hanger, which actually fits down through the hole. And I just bent the, the end there so it doesn't come off. And now we're gonna fish that down through our hole. So now that I've fished it through, we can pull this through and I can start threading that through the end there. Now we'll put our other O-ring on over the top of that. Put our nut over the top of that. Go ahead and hold this and tighten the nut down. All right, next up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run our fuel line. I mean, they give us quite a bit. That's just in case you actually put your fuel nozzle, say like on the other side and you, and you need to run it over there. Just make sure that wherever you put the fuel nozzle, you have enough line in order to make it over to the fuel inlet. We'll go ahead and feed this on to the nozzle. Make sure we got a good secure connection on there. And then I'll just make sure that I have enough to draw the fuel over and into the inlet. So we'll go ahead and just cut this. A hair longer will suffice for the fuel line. And if I ever need to run it again, I've got plenty of hose. So I'll just take the red cover off of the inlet and then I'll just run the fuel line over the top of that nozzle. Okay, and that's getting the fuel tank hooked up to the case, so now it's all one unit. I may have a alternative later on down the future modification that I'll look at doing for this. But in the meantime, this is going to work just fine. Then we have our air intake, which is here. Now this particular unit is kind of meant for it to kind of come up the side here like this, and in order for it to kind of retain its shape, it has a couple of these metal brackets. And this metal bracket's gonna sit right here, and that will hold the hose up and out of place. Next up, we can go ahead and start attaching our air intake hose. So we'll make sure that uh, we get the hose clamp around that. I'll go ahead and take the bracket that's next and attach that up here. Now that we have the bracket on, you will just take your air inlet hose and we can trim this off so that way we've just got enough for the air filter. We'll also do the same for the exhaust. Now that this is completely put together, we've got the gas tank with the fuel line running to it. We've got our air intake. We've got our exhaust, both with the mounts to kind of help preserve the angle. We have the all-in-one set up now. I do kind of like this particular setup a little bit more than the other one. I do have my hot air output, which will be switched out to a three inch insulated vent hose. The one thing I will be keeping is this nice little cap that I'll put on my insulated tube and run this into the tent. All right, we also have our power plug plugs in right to the front here next to our LCD control panel. So right down in here. I will be adapting the ends here. So these are a 16 gauge wire, so we will need a 16 gauge DC plug. So I will be snipping the ends off here so that way we can run it to our DC plug. All right, now we're ready to set up the briefcase version. Now, once again, we're gonna go ahead and 
fill up our fuel tank. We're gonna make sure that I fill it above the inlet or the intake valve. Once again, I have it hooked up with a spade connector that's hooked into the Jackery. Now we should be able to power this on. Once again, I'm gonna just take off the cover plastic. Make sure that we got a connection. It is on. There you go, you can hear it start heating and we'll let it kind of warm up and do its thing. You can see the start of some fuel coming in through the fuel line. And once this warms up, the fuel pump will kick on and it'll start to draw that in. So far, everything's looking good, no leaks. There we go, we got the fuel pump. You can see the fuel being drawn in. You can see the fuel being drawn in. filter and then it'll go in through the pump and then the pump will actually go in to the unit. We have it on high and once again 36 watts as this kind of gets going you might see that uh, the exhaust pipe changes color. And close this up. We are seeing to I'm starting to see a little bit of burn off. There you go, there's some of the burn off. I'm gonna go ahead and open the garage just a little bit more. You can see just how cold it is outside. We'll just get some of that burn off going. But yes, there is warm air coming out of it. So it's starting to gear up again. 123 watts as it starts warming up. And I believe the burn off is all done. So I want to keep that in the garage. And once again, similar setup to the red one. This is Bluetooth enabled. We'll get that kind of going here in just a second. All right, now one of the nice things about this particular unit is that it is Bluetooth enabled. The app here you can see is called Air Heater by BLE. I've gone ahead and set up the system. What you'll want to do in order to pair this is you'll hit the settings tab now that it's on and hold it down for three seconds. That'll change it over to this F mode. You can see up in the top corner here. Right now it's on F0, that's to change the time. We'll just turn the knob until you see F8 and you'll see B-ON. That means Bluetooth is on. Now, if you want to set up a new one, you'll go up to the top right corner of the screen in the app where it says scan new. You can disconnect any of the units that are attached here. Right now, I am connected to this model. And when you connect, you will get this set up on the screen. Now, up and down is to change your levels and it'll take a sec. I'm going to go ahead and hold three seconds on the main unit, which will get me back to the main menu screen. But I can change my levels. I can turn it down. It'll take it a sec to adjust, which is really nice. Now they do have level mode and smart mode. I'll just go down to level mode, so that way I can control the levels. It gives you your temperature right in the center, so you can see 184 degrees uh, Celsius. We're on level one, we've got 13.2 volts going through, and obviously the uh, power button right in the middle. Now up in the top right corner you have your, I believe it's the 10 degrees Celsius for your interior temperature. But as you can see here, this is much quieter than the red version, and that's actually really, really nice. 
Well, Mumphy Mafia, hopefully you've learned a little bit about each of these types of diesel heaters. I'm curious to know which one interests you the most. Is it going to be this kind of PC style setup or is it going to be this briefcase? Here's a couple of pros and cons for each of them. With the red PC build, you are going to get a pretty much hard shell setup. The nice thing is that it is pretty quick to set up as well. All you're really having to attach is your front blower hose, your exhaust, and your air intake. With a little bit of electrical ad adaptation, you can get this to run off of like I had a Jackery 300 just fine and getting it set up and running. Some of the cons is that because the diesel heater is set on the bottom of this particular unit, you will have that exhaust hose running off the bottom. And as you can see, setting it on my plastic table, I did get quite a bit of a scorch mark and I melted the plastic on here. So you do have to take into consideration plenty of clearance underneath this particular diesel heater. Other than that, I think it is a good setup. It is a nice option if this is the route you're going for. It is less expensive as well. Just make sure that you're filling your gas tank higher than where the gas hose outlet or inlet or the little plug is, so that way it's able to actually drain the fuel. Now, for the briefcase style build, I do like the compact setup. This is actually much, much quieter than the red PC build, simply because of the fuel pump. This has a little bit more insulation in it. Uh, running these kind of back to back I just, I noticed that even on the low settings for each of these, this is quieter. So for those light sleepers out there, this might be a good option for you. The other thing that I like is that your air intake hose and exhaust hose are basically mitigated. They're not going to touch anything that you set this on. You have it coming out of the sides, as you can see here. They're also not in the same area. You do sacrifice a little bit of space because your gas tank is on the outside of this, but you can clearly see how much fuel you have and have used. Some of the cons might be a little bit of the setup time that you have with this particular unit. You do have to drill a hole in the, in the fuel tank so that way you can run your fuel line where this one's already set up for you. Setting up some of the brackets for either of these and making sure that everything is working properly. I do like some of the added benefits that it gives with this one. You do get that uh, end cap for the warm air outlet hose. That way you can hose clamp that to your replacement insulated hose and run that all the way up into your tent. As far as portability, I think they're both very portable. This briefcase style might take up just a little bit more room because of the external gas tank, where this one is a little bit narrower and will take up less. Either way, you're gonna have to figure out a way to pack out that insulated hose if you decide to replace this. But I know which one I am going to go with. I'm actually pretty happy with the briefcase style version. And I also like that both of these are Bluetooth enabled. Having that option to control it from your phone and actually see that readout is leaps and bounds better than the little remote. Well, Wolfie Mafia, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, please smash that like button. Let me know what your thoughts are. If Is this something you are considering for your camping outings? Love to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate all of your support. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.